Hello, this is Julia Whittup with Talk Story TV, and I have with me this morning Michelle Gines, who is going to talk to us about the seven keys of a queen, releasing the entrepreneurial woman. And I think a lot of us women are going to be interested in how to do that. Why don't you go ahead and tell us some key things? <laughs> Absolutely. And thank you so much, Julia, for having me on today. I'm super excited about being here with you and Talk Story TV and all of your viewers. And you know what? I had talked, I had been talking to a couple of my coaches and mentors, and we were talking about what is it that people need? What is it that women need as they get started on their entrepreneurial journey? And I was thinking about all of the things that would have been helpful for me. And not so much the soft skills that you kind of learn over the course of a career, you know, communication and listening and all of that. But it was more about what are the things character wise that I could learn or that I needed to know or needed to have in order to be successful. And that's where the seven keys came from. So and there are keys like, you know, it's wisdom. It is, you know, do you have a coach? Do you have a mentor? Do you have somebody who has done what you are wanting to do that you can talk to that can help you navigate that journey? So the seven keys were birthed out of what would have been helpful for me to know before I got started to kind of curtail some of the things that I've, I experienced when I got, first got started. So that's where it came from. Okay. Yeah, when I read your thing, I thought, oh, I think I could use some of that. <laughs> <laughs> what are some of the challenges you, you described? You, said, you say that the various cha chapters describe challenges. Can you just mm -hmm. briefly tell us what some of those are? Oh, absolutely. You know what? I'm gonna, I'll give you the seven keys. The seven keys, the first one is wisdom, mm -hmm. which is the principal thing. Um, key number two is confidence, comrades, and confidants. And the third is stick with the principles so that you'll gain the promises. And then four is order your steps and business will follow. Then five is make it your business to give. And six is every business needs praise. And seven is leaving a legacy. And okay. so, so those are the seven keys. Okay, and I know I'm jumping right to the end one, but what does leaving a legacy mean? You know what, leaving a legacy is, what is it after, if you were not here anymore, would your business be able to continue? And if so, how does it continue? And so leaving a legacy is being able to have something that's left behind. All businesses don't have to close because the person who started it dies or decides to retire, you know, businesses can stay, you know, in the marketplace and then continue to have success for your heirs and for your family for generations to come. When I think about, you know, big players like an H&R Block or who is a, a local native here in Kansas City, Henry Block, and, and H&R Block is still going on and going strong today long after yeah. he has yeah. moved on. And so... You know, it's about being able to, you know, and not only the, the business itself as the legacy, but what do people say about that business? When you think about companies like a Hallmark Cars and the, and the owners and those core values that they had, you know, leaving a legacy is leaving a legacy of excellence. It's leaving a legacy of encouragement. It's leaving a legacy of purpose. It's leaving a legacy of love. It's, it's whatever your core values are when you started your business, leaving those things behind, you know, and leaving the business open long after you're gone or you've decided to retire. All right. That's a, I like that. I'd like to All know right. that. <laughs> yeah, that would be a good thing to leave. It would. It would. Okay. And you have a radio show? You know what? I used to host a radio show um, for, I worked for a healthcare center um, a few years ago. And one of my roles while I was there was um, host our weekly highlights on health radio program. So I had the wonderful opportunity to 
talked to different guests and I met so many different people. I'm sure like you get to meet yeah. now with, with your program. And so I did that and I didn't realize that I liked it. I didn't realize that was something that I could do. You know, you get thrown into a role and, and you do it. And, and then you find out, hey, this isn't so bad. I actually like doing this. And so it was a lot of fun. I met a lot of really interesting people and have had the opportunity from being on the radio even with my business people still remember my name here in the city and say oh i remember hearing you on the radio i remember you interviewing and so it was one of those great things that i got to do and love it every opportunity that i've gotten thereafter well yeah that sounds pretty neat and um okay tell us uh let's go back to the first one wisdom oh, okay. You were talking about that earlier. What what do you mean by wisdom? You know what? Wisdom is the basic things. Can you do and perform or provide the, the service that you are planning on starting your business around? A lot of times we may see somebody else doing something or a business that we may think is successful. And so we decide, you know what? I want to go into business and I'm going to do that. Well, wisdom says, do what you're good at. It is whatever skill and expertise that you have, then you want to find the way to mo either monetize that and start an entrepreneurial venture with it. You know, because most people want to have confidence in you and what you're able to do. And so wisdom says, let me do a little bit of my research to find out what actually goes into making this business run. What is it that I'm going to need? You know, where am I going to need to be? Can I do it from home? Do I, will I need an office location? You know, someone setting up a restaurant questions are very different from somebody who is going to um, publish books per se. You know, there's some things that we can do, you know, at a home office that, you know, you, could, you wouldn't run a restaurant out of your house, <laughs> you know. And so... You know, wisdom is all of those conventional things that are important for starting a business. You know, it's um, all the things that, you know, it's asking the right questions and getting the answers from people who either know or have done it before. And it's being comfortable with asking. A lot of times we like to do, you know, now everybody knows that nobody can be Superman or Superwoman. But to be honest, a lot of times we like to go at it that way. And but the wisdom in it is you don't have to go it alone. You know, you can't curtail some of the challenges that come up and, and things that you could potentially face that could be pitfalls or threats to a business starting up. You know, and it's finding out those things ahead of time just so that you can go out and you can start smart. And I noticed you mentioned your coach. Do you recommend people get a coach? You know what? I do. And it, and it doesn't have to be. Um, a coach that is, you know, a lot of times some of the coaches are very expensive and, and everybody's budget doesn't always dictate that they can have a, a coach that they're paying a thousand dollars a month to go and see. However, there are people, most of us have within our network some individuals that have been in business for a while um, that would potentially sign on to mentor us or kind of coach us through the process. And then there's also a lot of networking groups where you can identify people that you connect with that you can tell from the from the meeting or having known them, whether you've known them for a long time or you've just recently met, whether or not that could be someone that can assist you um, or would be willing to coach you. Um, and just and sometimes it's having conversations. Sometimes it's breakfast, you know, and it's a half an hour of talk time. Hey, I've got some things that I want to run by someone. You know, tell me what you think about this, you know, uh -huh, and, okay. so, you know, whether it's a paid coach or it's a, a, a mentoring relationship that you kind of develop with uh, or networking with someone, um, all those, all those options, you know, just depending on who you are and what you, what your budget says is okay for you. I would definitely encourage you to do those because they're great also at being accountability partners for us. And you need that as well. Yes. Oh. <laughs> I need an accountability partner. <laughs> Do you? Well, we'll, ha we'll have to work together then, Julia. <laughs> because I come up with tons of ideas, but I don't follow through often. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a tough one because a lot of times you do. 
you know, you come up with things and, and you're like, wow, how much of an impact can this make in my business? Will it, you know, will it really help us? Would it marginally help us? You know, should I put some time and effort into it? Or is it one of those things that, you know what, six months from now, it's not going to matter or it's not going to have gotten pushed the needle very far. And so then you decide, you know what, it isn't worth pursuing, perhaps. Yeah. But a lot of times it is good to have somebody that you can share it with and you can say, Hey, no, that is a great idea. Let's, you know, let's move that forward. And Julie, okay, every Friday at two o'clock in the afternoon, we're just going to touch base and see how you're doing. And, <laughs> and that has been very good for me. I mean, I, I, I think everybody needs that. We need somebody to help us be accountable to becoming the best at who we are, but also making our business the best that it can be as well. And you talk in here about creating multiple streams of income. What, yes. Can you talk more about that? Absolutely. That's one of the things I love to talk about because, you know, Julia, let's be honest. Most of the time, especially women, you know, we are still in the marketplace under, we earn 40% um, less than men do in the workplace, occupying the same jobs, giving the same amount of time and hours and diligence. And, and sometimes more we do more than the guys do but the guys still get paid more well in our businesses <clears throat> you know the guys are always willing to negotiate they're always willing to go for the big bucks and they are a lot of times they take more risk and as women we have a tendency not to do that but I'll tell you seven streams of income is the biblical um, term that they use and they describe and it really is it is identifying how can I earn seven streams? How can I earn seven money seven different ways? And so, you know, you have your traditional things like maybe a 401k or your savings plans and things like that. But I like to talk about those things that make us a little bit more unconventional. And now maybe it takes a little bit more work on the front end. But the residual and the um, and the future is so much greater because of it. So I always give seven. And the first one is wholesale a product. You know, so create a, if you have a product and wholesale it. So you're wholesaling it and, you know, and so and that's for you would be selling books, you know, to a group as mm -hmm. opposed to selling a book one at a time. So you can sell more to one buyer. Uh -huh. um, retail the product, which of course is what you do, you know, when you are selling one book to a customer who is wanting to purchase. But it's coming up with the with the product. So it's writing a book. And Julia, do you have a you have a how many books do you have yourself that you've done? That I've written myself? Yeah. One. <laughs> one. <laughs> one so far. You've got plenty of time yeah, to one write so three far. Books. <laughs> Run so forth. So okay, so you write a book. Well, then put something else with the book. Whether it is a CD or a um, a DVD, whatever it is, maybe it's a video or something. But you know, so create a product. You need a book or some type of a product that goes along with it. Um, so that's the third one. The fourth is offer consulting. I do a lot of consulting with um, other people who are going into business or even some authors who are who are working on writing um, books. It is, but consulting is something, what is your area of expertise that maybe you were doing in your workplace before you decided to venture out on your own and making that available. People want to learn from your experience. And so consulting is a way to do that. You can teach a class. You know, what again, it, well, if we're falling back on what is it that I have expertise in and using those things to create these alternate sources of income. And so teaching a class like consulting, you're using the knowledge and know-how that you have to present to a number of people who are interested in what you have to share. And then the sixth thing, which is one that I absolutely love to do, is speak. Speak. You know, so you teach a class and then someone at that class says, you know what, hey, you'd be great to come and motivate our group or talk to our group or share with our group or our company or what have you. And so think about speaking. And a lot of times people, you know, a lot of people that I know, they write books 
And then they're like, oh, Michelle, I don't, I absolutely do not, I have a fear of getting in front of people. And so I don't know if I want to do that. And I'm always like, you know what, when you are talking about something that you have expertise in, it doesn't feel like you're doing a speech and there's a thousand people in the room. It feels like you're talking one on one, just like we're talking here. And so you're having a you're having a conversation with lots of people about something you feel strong and passionate about and you can get through it easy breezy. So speaking is a great one for people. And sometimes you'll you may speak at no cost. But if you've got a book or that product, then you have the opportunity to retail that product when you're there after you speak. And then the second thing that I tell people about, if you have a website, do a subscription. You can make it so that people can subscribe to get information about what you know. You're, again, it's drawing back on your area of expertise. So shoot out an email that just has some tips or tidbits in it, you know, that you can share with people and they can subscribe to it. And maybe it's anything from $5 a month to maybe it's a it's $10 over the course of the year. At any rate, you have created an alternate source of income that you hadn't had to do anything additional to do, but mm -hmm. you have it and it's a way that you can increase your income. So those are my seven streams that I tell people about all the time. And there's plenty of others, but those are a good group to get started with. Okay. And Michelle has written an article for us called the four, four secrets of success. Was that it? Yes. Yep, it's the four success tips. Yes. Four success and, tips. Mm hmm And that's at tvbackstory.com. And you can link up to her website. But tell us about your website. What's what's available on your website? What you find on the michellegunz.com website, there's lots of information on there about um, speaking. It's um, so I, I love to go and talk to groups and, and see, work with them on speaking as well as coaching or consulting if that's something that they need. But you'll also be able to find. Oh, I'm sneezing, Julia. <laughs> hey, season. I've been having those problems too. <laughs> but you'll also be able to find out there. My blog is out there as well as success tips. I'm all about really helping people create, find, identify. What is going to make you successful? And what's important to one person or how one person defines success is different from someone else. But the, but the one thing that's common for all of us is that it's going to require some type of action or some steps that we are going to have to take personally in order to achieve our success goal. And so when you're out there, you'll find lots of information, RSS feeds on you know, places to go and things you can do to create success in your own life and the lives of those around you. So okay. that you'll find a lot of good information out there. So check us out. Okay. Thanks for being with us and check out her article at tvbackstory.com and her website at michellegynes.com. Right? That is it. That's okay. it. All right. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you so much for having me. Have a good day. You too.